But to uh, uh, carry on the, the theme for the day, um, one of the, the questions that we had earlier was um, how do we um, bring attention to the motivation that we have? How do we practice right effort? It's attuned effort, um, free of, of self-view. And that's, in a way, the... Um, uh, well, one of the crucial issues with respect to this aspect of, of meditation and spiritual uh, spiritual training. In uh, the, the, the many lists that the, the Buddha uh, came up with, there's a, um, a set of four qualities called the factors supportive of stream entry. So stream entry is a level of of realization or insight where there's a so irreversible quality of understanding that uh, has been that has been reached and uh, the the buddha pointed out there was four um uh, four particular things that help to bring about that that uh, that turning point that uh, that breakthrough it's also known as and so the first one is uh, drawing close to good people. Sapurisa um, Sangseva. So I would, I would um, hum, uh, humbly suggest that gathering together with a group of people uh, as I gathered today, this is um, a collection of Sapurisa, good hearted, well, uh, well intentioned uh, people, people with a spiritual motivation. So drawing close to, uh, to people who have a skillful and wholesome qualities, Sapurisa Sanseva, drawing close to good people. Then the second one is listening to the, uh, the beneficial teachings, um, Sadhamma Savana, listening to the good Dhamma. So I would uh, also humbly, <laughs> maybe it sounds a little bit inflated, uh, but uh, I would suggest that drawing close to the Buddha's teaching, putting time and attention onto uh, these spiritual themes and um, uh, say teachings that have a, a, a ring of truth to them and are connected with what is genuinely valuable, genuinely, genuinely liberating. So um, Sadhamma Savana, listening to the good teachings. The third one of that list of factors supportive of stream entry is called Yoniso Manasikara, which means wise reflection, bringing attention to the, the origin or the source of things. And then the fourth one is Dhamma Nu Dhamma Patipada, practicing Dhamma in accordance with Dhamma. Uh, so that the the the, go to the fourth one, uh, the, first of all. So uh, what I've been talking about a lot today is how to um, you know, practice Dhamma, uh, how to train the mind in accordance with with nature, in accordance with reality, rather than in accordance with self-view or with habit or a sense of obligation. So practicing Dhamma based on self-view is, you know, uh, I should do this, uh, the, the, uh, the teacher told me I should do this, or I read this book and it promised that if I did this and I would get that. So that I would say is practicing Dhamma, yes, but in accordance with, with, uh, with self-view or with ambition or with obligation or um, with a, 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 gaining, uh, a gaining mind an attitude of, of gaining and such like. So that to practice Dhamma in accordance with Dhamma means how to apply energy and effort, um, how to direct the, uh, the attention and direct the uh, spiritual practice uh, free of self-view, free of conceit. And so it really is a, um, a kind of it's a, an effort that leads genuinely to that quality of integration uh, and to, to liberation rather than to uh, the sort of feeding those habits of becoming and, uh, and wanting to get rid of. And that which uh, I mentioned earlier today, which directly lead to more stress, more, more dukkha, more difficulty and alienation in the heart. So, um, the, the third one then, Yoni Manasikara, I wanted to, to bring attention to right now. So this wise reflection, this is uh, say, a way of using our, uh, say, the, the ability of the mind to, to um, 
recognize patterns, to see how things work together, to see the, the relationship of cause and effect, and to, to use our experience, our imagination, our intelligence, all, all of those uh, mental qualities to uh, uh, get an accurate picture of how things are working and, and what, it, what is being experienced. And so wise reflection is a very, very much a part of, of uh, the way of practice and teaching of Ajahn Chah, Ajahn Sumedho, and those of you who've read their books or listened to their teachings or practiced with uh, Ajahn Sumedho or Ajahn Chah in the past will know, or, or read, their, read their works, uh, will know that this sense of, uh, of picking up a, a mind state, an experience, a reaction, and exploring it. Oh, where did that? Where did that come from? Oh, this made me very excited. You know, what's that about? Or, or, like, oh, that's just what I did. That's just what I didn't want to hear. So the mind is now trying to get away from this. So what? What's um, you know? What's so frightening about this? Or what's so off-putting? Where does this come from? Uh, so the, the wise reflection. It doesn't necessarily involve conceptual thought, but conceptual thought um, is a, a way of helping that contemplative um reflective attitude to be uh to be actualized so there, there's a um a uh, a question and answer session in one of Ajahn Chah's books and he's asked the question what is contemplation uh, you know i would say wise reflection is is very close to um, what we mean by by contemplation or right? investigation and uh, Ajahn Chah makes the point that, that it doesn't necessarily involve thinking. It's, a, it's more of, a, of an exploratory attitude, an inquisitive quality. And also not just, not just being inquisitive or, 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 or curious, but it's also that quality that can recognize patterns, how things fit together, how things work. So it's, a, it's also the English word intuition, and intuitive wisdom is very closely related to this area. And again, those of you who've read uh, Ajahn Sumedho's books or been on retreats with him, heard him give Dhamma talks, you know, he talks a lot about intuitive awareness or intuitive wisdom. So this quality of intuition is that uh, a sense of how things fit together, how they work, even if you haven't spelt it out or that you, know, you haven't got a clear conceptual map of how things fit together, that um, uh, yoni so manasikara in, uh, in uh, wise reflection or investigation um, is drawing upon that capacity a uh, sense of how things fit together how they uh, how they work together how one thing conditions another and the um, the the kind of uh, natural order of things that the 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 way that things work in terms of of the mind the, the field of perception the world around us our own body our own personality and so on and so forth. So, uh, with respect to uh, to the, um, the the theme for the day, then uh, what I, uh, some of the things I was saying this morning, uh, the uh, we can actively use wise reflection to help cultivate these qualities uh, that are so the the substance of attuned effort or skillful effort, learning how to use effort and give direction in a, in a genuinely liberating and, uh, and beneficial way. And so that um, this uh, qualities are of wise reflection. Uh, again, it's not to getting lost in thought <laughs> or just conceptually you know, weaving a whole conceptual uh, web around uh, uh, around what we're doing or what we're experiencing, but rather deliberately and consciously using uh, thought and the the the, uh, the ability of the mind to to consider, to reflect, uh, that to um, uh, say uh, examine the motivation that we have or right? the effort that is being made. So maybe a couple of things to say about contemplation on consideration. So. Siddhar is the, the word for the stars, like sidereal time, Siddhar, S-I-D-E-R. To consider is to be um, pay attention to the stars or to be in tune with the stars. Co to contemplate means to be within the, the templum or the, 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 uh, the um, sort of designated boundary for reflection. So in, in uh, terms of to 
contemplare in Latin um, comes from the, the word templum and a templum in the ancient times in the times of the ancient Romans and um, that civilization people who were um, astrologers or diviners or soothsayers as they say uh, they would mark out an area of the ground or even of the sky and then look and see what animals or birds uh, the things that happened within the space of that uh, temple, that designated area. So uh, a temple that like we have here at Amravati, our meditation hall, that word temple is like a designated area, as a building in these circumstances, within which um, that kind of investigation or that exploration occurs. Um, so to contemplate is an internal, uh, 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 an internal say, designation of a boundary. You're putting your attention onto a designated area and to contemplate means to see, see what's going on within that temple of that, that designated space. And, uh, and that watchfulness, uh, again, is, uh, is a, uh, informed by our experience, our memory, our intelligence, and our uh, intuitive capacity to recognize patterns and such like. So to, uh, to consider or to contemplate, it's not, uh, not just thinking about things, but it's a, a quality of vision and a, a sense of, of interest, a readiness to be surprised and or to, to, to not know and to be sort of to be ready to be informed or to, to understand things in a, in a broader way. So the, um, uh, with respect to cultivating skillful effort, effort that's in tune with, 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 with reality, with nature, then um, that the first one, if you recall what I was saying this morning, is restraining the unwholesome from arising. So that, uh, that uh, say setting the intention um, to, to not allow uh, uh, feelings of irritation to arise or not uh, our feelings of anxiety, you know, worry to arise or the intention to uh, not, um, as a move towards uh, greed or, or self-centeredness and uh, or jealousy and such like. So that um, in terms of restraining the unwholesome from arising um, or, or laziness and such like. So rather than you know, I shouldn't be lazy or um, I've got a, a I'm very sort of negative and reactive. I've got to get rid of my my reactivity. Um, uh, uh, or if we have a, a experience a lot of anxiety, I'm a very worried person. I'm always worrying about things. I'm always fretting. Um, so that if, with respect to uh, that uh, that sense of restraining uh, the unwholesome, the mind is forming the, the 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 picture in the way of you know I've got this bad habit. I need to get rid of it. I shouldn't be this way. I shouldn't be so lazy. I shouldn't be so agitated. I shouldn't be so critical. To wise reflection, the cultivation of wise reflection is to uh, say, notice those habits and to say, well, uh, okay, I, I say that I'm always worried about things. Is that true? Yes, worry arises and it's around fairly often. But I, I, I say to myself, I say to other people, I'm always worried. Is that so? So the, the mind that's, that's ready to ask that question, is that so? It's, it's opening up a broader picture, a broader view. Um, <clears throat> or that, uh, um, that, uh, or that uh, oh, I, I hope that the, there's not going to be too much noise in the street outside my, my home today. Uh, it's a Saturday. It's a Saturday. Uh, you know, I, it'll be so annoying if there's a lot of traffic uh, going by because we've got this meditation day. And to to recognise, uh, well, uh, the the mind is creating, uh, you know, is buying into irritation. And if there is noise, then that's therefore a bad thing. And if noise arises, then it's reasonable to complain about that or to get irritated by it. So uh, to to cultivate wise reflection with respect to this is to to say, well, you know, is noise to to again arouse that kind of question? If there is noise. Is there necessarily a problem uh, uh, if there if there if there is does turn out to be a lot of traffic going by? Uh, 
do I do I have to call that uh, an obstruction or a problem? It, uh, uh, or, or is there uh, a different way of holding it, a different way of relating to it? Many of you, are, uh, if you've um, the, uh, read any of uh, uh, the, the collections of Ajahn Chah's teachings or listened to other Dhamma talks, will be familiar with the story of how uh, many years ago in the 1970s, uh, when Ajahn Chah was visiting London and uh, the, the monastery was a, a small house on Haverstock Hill in Hampstead, uh, just across the road from the Haverstock Arms. Maybe some of you are, uh, live in that part of London or know it well. And uh, so the Haverstock Arms uh, had, uh, it was summertime when he was there and they had loud music playing. Uh, and so that uh, because Ajahn Chah was, a, it was unusual to have a sort of distinguished teacher uh, at, the, at the little Vihara, Hampstead Vihara, so the place was quite packed and being a, a warm summer evening then they uh, people would, would get uh, wanted the windows open so they could they could breathe to get a bit of fresh air in so when they open so during the meditation when they opened the windows the loud the loud music sort of came pounding in and uh, was uh, filling the room and so then after a little while then people would close the windows and uh, the sound would be quieter but then the temperature would rise and it would get stuffy and, and uncomfortable and then after a little while, then they open the window again and the music would be loud. And so Ajahn Chah had, I wasn't there in the room at the time, but I've heard the story uh, over and over. <laughs> so he, he had the, the sitting going on for about an hour and a half. Uh, and during this time, there's a lot of people shuffling, opening the windows, closing the windows, opening the windows, closing the windows. Finally, after an hour and a half, when he rang the bell and he said, um, uh, you think that the sound is annoying you. But actually, what's happening is that you are annoying the sound. The sound is being just what it is. It's just the air vibrating. The, if you call it, a, if, it's a, if it's a problem, that problem, uh, that problematic quality is only coming from one place. <laughs> it's coming from our minds. Yet in and of itself, the, the sound is just the, just the air vibrating. And uh, and so there's different ways that we can hold these experiences. So wise reflection is, uh, with respect to sort of restraining, that uh, restraining the unwholesome, is to, to question, to explore those, those attitudes that are there. Similarly, with letting go, when the mind is getting caught into, uh, let's say, the desire uh, for um, uh, wanting to hold on to a, a, a pleasant mind state or is wanting to, to get rid of a, a painful feeling in the body um, that uh, they think, oh, um, finally, well, at least the, the, you know, the road is quiet, but I've got this terrible pain in my knee. If only this pain wasn't there, then I could really concentrate. This is getting in the way of my practice. And so then, uh, again, looking at that, um, the, the, the way that the mind grasps uh, unwholesome states that have arisen. So the first one is restraining unwholesome states from arising. If they have arisen, whether it's greed or aversion or anxiety or agitation, uh, dullness, um, whatever it might be that uh, recognizing, oh, uh, 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 here's the mind saying, if I didn't have this, this pain in my leg, I would be totally happy. That, uh, and that if this was gone, then, uh, uh, all my suffering would be over. So wise reflection is like in, in exactly the same way as spelling out uh, what the attitude is, like giving it a voice. And then by giving it a voice, you're not, uh, you're not validating it, but rather by um, letting it speak up, like the, the giving voice, that, that idea, if I didn't have this pain in my leg, I would be totally happy. And when you spell that out, uh, I find uh, that you can't get to the end of the sentence before you start chuckling to yourself. It's like, yeah, right. You know, you'd find something else to get uh, upset about or excited about or, or that would, uh, would be grabbing the attention. So that you're using wise reflection to recognize those attitudes. And then by spelling it out, that, uh, that the, the habits of identification, like this is my pain is happening in my leg. And if I got rid of it, then I would be happy. And just to 
notice the amount of, of I there is. He says, my, <laughs> there's a, a feeling of me as the owner of this pain and as uh, the owner of the leg. Uh, and if I did this thing that, to get rid of it, uh, then then I would be would be happy. So wise reflection is highlighting those attitudes. And as I was saying uh, like, uh, earlier today with respect to the posture and concentration, you don't have to say, therefore, get rid of this, or, or, or I'm a stupid person because I'm hanging on to these attitudes. Just by bringing awareness to the attitudes that are there, through wise, that wise reflection, that yoni so manasikara, that awareness is what then brings about the pahanati, the, the letting go, the relinquishing. That once you, you if you see that you're you're holding on to something really tightly, maybe you can't see from so my my kind of gripping this pen. It's like my arm is shaking. It's tense. If I just relax the grip, I don't have to throw the pen away. But the, the, there's a feeling of ease within the system, so that. You know, if you don't realize that you're, you're, you're holding it, it's kind of out of your range of vision, then you can be generating tension, agitation in the system without being aware of it. When you recognize, where's this tension coming from? I'm really, I'm kind of, my arm is, is vibrating. And, All right, I'm clinging to this pen. Why am I doing that? <laughs> as soon as it's recognized that the clinging is going on, you can't sustain it in the same way. If you don't realize it's happening, it's much easier for it to sustain its momentum. So uh, this way of wise reflection is bringing into, a, into the field of attention the attitudes that are there, and then by um, spelling out what is being assumed, um, then it, the, the self-based, the eye-making and mind-making can be relinquished, and, and it's the power of awareness. Uh, it's a, a awareness informs the action. It doesn't have to be a, a me who then lets go, but rather by there being awareness and the letting go happens on its own. It's like when the autumn comes, the, the tree doesn't have to have a committee meeting to decide to let the leaves change color and drop off. That's what happens in the autumn. <laughs> the, the, the leaves are turned because of the, the change of season and they fall away. That's, that's what they do. And so similarly, when the the, the mind is aware of that, that, that clinging and it's fully known, the, the power of, of awareness, the impact of the awareness is it informs the, the action of letting go. So it's a self-adjusting system, a self-adjusting universe in this way. Then um, with the cultivating, with that bhavana, giving rise to the wholesome qualities, then uh, again, to, to see what the attitudes of the mind are. I need to concentrate. I need to be more awake. Yeah, I, I need to brighten my mind. I should, I should straighten my posture. <laughs> I should. Uh, the wise reflection is then bringing those kind of attitudes into focus, seeing that, oh, notice all of this eye making and mind making around concentration or development of wisdom or alertness, being more, being more mindful. Uh, uh, and say, yeah, those, uh, it's, it's helpful for those wholesome qualities to be cultivated, but feel and know the amount of self-view and, and uh, eye-making, mind-making that's coming into the picture. And then uh, uh, wise reflection, you can use questioning like, you know, uh, who, who is it that needs to, to concentrate? You know, who is it that, that uh, is agitated? Yeah. Uh, who is it that needs to wake up? Or so you can use a question as a pattern of, a, of uh, an angle of approach, uh, as a, a way of describing the pattern. Or you can just use a statement of like highlighting, clarifying what the attitude is. Like, I am agitated. I need to relax. I need to calm down. Or, I need to straighten my posture. And almost the. Uh, with wise reflection, it's not just the mind getting caught into a, a flow of chattering thought, but there's a measured, even quality. So that like within the, the, the meditation and noticing what the attitude is, then to, to internally, to, to uh, quietly and steadily spell out, you know, I need to sit up straight. Who's the I that needs to sit up straight? Or the the, uh, the uh, you know, I, my my mind is chattering. Yeah, 
I, I need to concentrate. That to, to quietly and steadily spell that out, then it reveals those self-centered habits. And so then by that, uh, that simplicity, that clarity of vision, then that those self-creating habits can fall away. And then the effort to brighten up or to, for, the, for the posture to straighten, that's coming directly from mindfulness and wisdom, that quality of, of awareness, rather than me um, letting go of an of a unskillful attitude, and me replacing it with a, uh, a skillful one. So that uh, that um, that same process of wise reflection on cultivating the wholesome. And so it's not me concentrating on me developing insight or me um, doing what is necessary to bring about spiritual development. <laughs> There's a that those qualities are being brought into into fulfillment. Into in, they're being uh, brought. Uh, to uh, into into being, but that's not being driven or, or affected by self view. And then the last one of maintaining and being the anurakana, the sustaining, and maintaining, rather than oh, I'm concentrating, my mind is peaceful and bright. I've got to hang on to this. I've got to keep this. Um, uh, I've uh, 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 my meditation is going really well. <laughs> uh, and this is great. This is how it should be. I'm, I'm really glad my my practice is is improving. This uh, that sense of again reflecting on that, listening and noticing how there's a an owner of the the mind states. There's a person who is apparently doing. There's a a me who's got this uh, quality of of concentration or who's owns this feeling of of brightness or spaciousness. And uh, just as I was quoting the Buddha this morning, saying, you know, I am at peace, I am without clinging, I have realized Nibbana, to, say, to turn the, the, the reflective uh, wisdom onto that and say, listen to this, the sound of that I, I am at peace, I am without clinging, I have realized Nibbana. And then letting that awareness of the, the I making and mind making be like the, the sun dissolving the dew in the, in the early morning, the, the dew evaporates from the grass in the early morning, just by the, the warmth of the sun, uh, that has its effect. So similarly, that when the brightness of, of, of awareness is there, then that um, self-view, that, that eye-making and mind-making naturally evaporates and, and, and dissolves. So this, uh, uh, with wise reflection, uh, it's uh, one of the things uh, with the, the development of that or the use of that is that if it isn't applied skillfully, it can very easily, it can start off as wise reflection, <laughs> that it's, it's genuinely contemplative and spacious and, uh, uh, and clear in the, in the beginning, but then uh, it can drift into the mind just chattering and co uh, commentating and uh, getting carried away by the streams of conceptual thought. So it can start off as uh, as a genuine reflective uh, contemplation, but uh, if the mind isn't paying attention and the, there isn't an awareness, then that clarity can uh, come to a, an end quite quickly. And then the, the mind is drawn into endless chattering thought. You've got the label on it. Oh, this is wise reflection. That's what this. That's what it says on the on the label. But the actuality of what's in the tin is just more. Ch uh, uh, internal chatter going on. So uh, just because it, you've you've labelled what you're doing as wise reflection, uh, it doesn't mean to say that's actually what's in the tin. <laughs> so if you follow what I mean, so it's important to to not just uh, have that. Oh, I'm practicing wise reflection, or I, this is contemplation, and then just letting things drift. But rather, what's going on here? Okay, I, I'm. I say that I'm reflecting on my mind states or I'm using this reflective quality. Yeah. How, uh, how attuned is the mind to what's, what's happening now? Or how much time has been spent just drawn into the, the uh, internal chatter and, and proliferating about past and future and, and uh, uh, ideas and opinions?